Okay, hi there, Jeff here with an exam answer, uh, a worked 25 mark answer to a question on river pollution and government intervention. Now here's the extract, uh, we're going to test this in terms of the Edexcel exam board, but it might be the case that you could use this for other 25 markers set by other exam specifications. Here's an extract uh, looking at the extent of um, pollution created by f agriculture, in, in particular things like intensive chicken farms, and also water companies discharging, discharging sewage into rivers, failing to inform the public when this occurs. Clearly there's some externalities here from production. Uh, and uh, the question is, with reference to at least two government policies of your choice, evaluate the effectiveness of policies that can be used to resolve the market failure outlined in the data. So key to this, I think, obviously, is to understand the market failure, first of all, build that strongly into the answer, and also talk about relative effectiveness. So here's my first uh, KA paragraph, my knowledge, application and analysis paragraph. Market failure occurs when the allocation of scarce resources leads to an inefficient and inequitable outcome, causing a deadweight loss of social welfare. Now, if I was marking this paper and I started, I read this as my first two lines, I would know this is going to be a tremendous answer. Because there's a very clear definition there of market failure. It's in the question. And if something appears in the question, I would, I would always define it early on in the answer. The extract points to negative externalities in production from chicken farming, causing uh, river pollution um, from phosphorus and nitrogen leaks, along with discharges of raw sewage from pipes operated by privatised water utilities. I've shown a bit of application there by mentioning Thames Water PLC. This pollution from farming and, uh, and uh, water sewage is a threat to health and damages businesses in the vicinity. In these cases, the marginal external cost, that's key, MEC, increases as pollution worsens, leading to marginal social cost diverging from marginal private cost. The result, if agents only consider their own costs and benefits, is a free market optimum output well above the social optimum, causing a social welfare loss of ABC in my analysis diagram. Uh, using that phrase, by the way, in my analysis diagram, points the examiner to the diagram you're going to be using. One intervention is to introduce a Pecuvian tax. Pecuvian tax is the idea of a polluter pays tax. And that's designed to internalise the externalities and reduce the incidence or the extent of pollution. And then I build that uh, explanation. Higher taxes on polluting chicken farms, for example, might cause some chicken farmers operating intensive production methods, maybe to switch perhaps to more sustainable methods, including maybe free-range farming using less polluting fertilisers and feeds. Uh, developing the point, a Pigouvian tax, uh, pollution tax, has the advantage of raising revenue, increasing revenues, which can be hypothecated or earmarked, for example, to promote improved bird welfare in chicken farms or fund vaccine deployment to mitigate the risk of bird flu, which hits market supply and causes prices to rise. So the tax can generate uh, revenues and that revenues could well be used for socially beneficial purposes as well as hopefully causing a change in the behavior of producers build the analysis diagram let me just work you through the analysis diagram here the market failure here's the output of chicken marginal private cost is the cost of the chicken farmers uh, but i'm arguing here that there's a negative externality in production so msc equals mpc plus marginal external cost mec Let's throw in the demand curve. I'm assuming here there's no, there's no externalities from consumption. So simplifying assumption. So the free market equilibrium is Q1. Uh, but at that output Q1, there is an external cost equal to that virginal distance. The social optimum is Q2. Uh, if we took into account the negative externalities from production, we'd have a lower output uh, and a higher price. And of course, the overproduction is the market failure. Let me just throw some more letters in. We love letters instead of shading. So a, a possible solution is to introduce a tax, for example, a tax on chicken farms using polluting methods of production. Uh, and that tax, in theory, if you get the tax right, causes the margin of private cost now to intersect at the social optimum. There's the price with the tax. There's the producer price post-tax, of course. The government gets the tax revenue. And uh, let's put some labels in. The area of tax revenue would be E, A, D, F, and output, but in theory, can get close to the social optimum. Evaluation at this point, however, whilst the Pigouvian tax can work in theory, 
to lower the incidence of river pollution from intensive farming. In practice, the effectiveness can be limited by if there's a low coefficient of price elasticity of demand. And I bring in the example there of, of who, are the, you know, who are the buyers of chickens, the biggest buyers of chickens or retailers such as Nando's and KFC. By the way, I love a Nando's. <laughs> and they buy many millions of chickens in the UK every year. And their demand is not really sensitive to the price. Um, so therefore, chicken farm businesses, even if they're taxed, they might be able to pass on the tax to their consumers, for example, Nando's, without really causing any major change in production methods. And even if they were to change their methods, there were big fixed costs in switching towards more sustainable organic chicken farming, for example. And, that, and they may well lose some of the economies of scale associated with intensive production. So there's a barrier to this tax working. And I'm arguing here that to be effective, producers might need to know that such a pollution tax would be maintained and perhaps even increased each year until the authorities measured meaningful reductions in, in river pollution attributed to farms. You can make a case for saying this paragraph is a little long, but it really does try to evaluate the effectiveness of the tax. My second policy is actually quite, in a sense, radical. I mean, I've seen answers which talk about pollution permits and tougher regulations and fines. All good. My argument is that second approach to the market failure. By the way, I'm going back to the question. Can you see that? I'm, I'm always going back to the question. So a second approach to the market failure associated with discharges of raw sewage from water this time is to nationalise the water industry. Privatisation happened in 1989. Uh, these are you know, regional water utilities, they're monopolies owned by private equity, sovereign wealth and infra infrastructure funds that are highly profitable. Well, if you revert back to state ownership, that would give the, great, the government much greater leverage or control over investment the necessary investment in the wastewater and sewage network. I put in a bit of macro here. The government debt, bond yields, just under 2%. So the government could perhaps borrow uh, more cheaply to fund the necessary infrastructure spending um, to, to improve a system that just can't cope with demand. And the cost of this could come from reinvesting profits rather than handing out as dividends to private shareholders. And I'm arguing also that with nationalisation, you could also set very high standards the EU, for example, sets tough standards on emissions from cars. You could do something similar, I guess. Uh, and of course, if you if you if you impose very tough standards, that could cause an inward shift to the marginal social cost curve and a fall in social welfare. Let me show you the diagram on that. So here's this is our original diagram. Remember this one with the externalities of production. If you impose uh, very strong standards and get the investment, which, for example, you know, um, the filtering of water and just the ability of the, of the system to cope, then this happens. There's the marginal social cost with tougher pollution standards. As a result, the social optimism is Q3, not Q2, and the deadweight loss of welfare falls from ABC to DEC. Evaluation, though, um, the extent of and persistence of a market failure depends on how well an industry is regulated. Extract suggests that off what has been underfunded, off what's the water industry regulator, of budget cuts and uh, the regulator may have been too reliant on information provided by the water companies regarding emissions and I would say that's an example of regulatory capture leading to regulatory failure. I'm arguing here that state ownership on its own is no guarantee of success and uh, if you impose tougher emission standards on chicken farmers for example uh, then that would increase their costs perhaps threatening jobs for smaller scale producers. Important in the 25 market to come to a final reason judgment. Best to try to avoid repeating points already made. I love this line here, by the way. It's rare that one single intervention can solve a complicated market failure. I think that's true with things like water pollution uh, and things like intensive farming and pollution. It's a very complicated market failure. In theory, the private sector has an incentive to reinvest profit to make their products more sustainable. But in the water, in the water industry, uh, privatisation has led to underinvestment, which is damaging to public health. So whilst pollution taxes might be effective in changing the cost and incentives of producers, I would argue for reversing the privatisation of the water industry as the best long-term approach. It could be the case, for example, that you throw in a third policy in your final judgment and say, actually, there might be another policy which, together with one of the other ones you talked about, could be most effective. Okay, that was a walkthrough of a 25 marker. I'll walk through some of the other 
questions in the days and weeks to come. Uh, we have published a whole series of great uh, exercises called Revision Shorts. So have a look on the Tutor Do website for advanced information shorts, where we create a, an extract, a new extract, based on the advanced information, and then create a lovely question for you to have a go on the back of it with mark schemes. Okay, thanks for joining in. Stay safe, stay happy, stay positive, and hopefully see you soon on the website.